Let's now uh, turn to all the advisory and the rise of ETFs and smart ETFs is uh, in the market. Well, is it taking away that share of traditional managed funds? Lee Smith joins us from What If Advice. Lee, good to catch up with you again. So, Thanks well, for me. I mean, investment is easy now, isn't it? You just uh, buy an ETF and off you go. Super easy, super easy. Uh, unfortunately, it's a bit more, more than that. But yeah, we, we've kind of made the decision that uh, active managers, while they do have a place in portfolios, probably the more traditional uh, equity side and bond side, we've sort of made that decision that you probably don't need exposure to active managers. And, and there's probably a couple of reasons why. Uh, probably the first reason is uh, key person risk. Um, if that fund manager decides to, to leave or whatever, then what happens to the, I guess, the ongoing management um, of that those investments? Secondly, you've got to consider fees. The traditionally active managers charge a, a higher fee than sort of traditional uh, index funds or smart ETFs. Um, so obviously you're, you're helping reduce the cost for, for clients as well. And then finally, you've probably got some capacity issues too. So depending on where you're investing in that space and probably more so the traditional, the, the smaller end of the space, some fund managers will run into sort of capacity issues. So that generally doesn't happen in the, in the index or smart index space. Lee, do, do you see significant trends here from a demographic point of view? Is it the younger investors who tend to opt for the ETF and, and um, therefore avoid those, uh, those managed funds because, well, obviously they'd be balking at perhaps those fees? Yeah, there has been a research, I think, recently conducted by Comsec, actually, where they, there is obviously a, a general trend for the younger investors to get into to ETFs um, over sort of traditional managed funds. So definitely it is the younger cohort, but I, I think obviously in the industry as well, we're obviously moving towards, um, you know, quicker turnaround times, that kind of thing. You know, with managed funds, it might take a week or so to get your money back. So you're in and out of the market, where, whereas ETFs, you know, within a couple of days, you sort of you get in and get out of your, of your, um, your position. So... Definitely uh, the younger cohort, but obviously we're seeing a transition with it with the older cohort too, and, and obviously educating clients around that as well. All right, so so can you talk about educating clients then? What would your message be to a new investor, a young investor, maybe just um, join the workforce, starting to earn some money, wants to put their money somewhere, um, as to the benefits of using a managed fund then? Uh, so managed funds, uh, uh, we kind of use managed funds for probably the stuff we can't get access to in traditional uh, ETF space. So we like sort of the alternatives when it comes to managed funds because there's no real ETFs or indexes that can track um, that that sort of space. So when we look at where to invest, we obviously want to look at the cost. So what's involved in terms of your how much it's going to cost you? Obviously, the asset allocation too. So what is your money money actually going to be invested in? So is it going to be in Australia? Is it going to be overseas? And then what's the underlying holding? So, and then just taking, I guess, a long-term approach when it comes to, to investing, because we know markets can go up and markets can go down, but taking a long-term approach and, and sort of looking at, you know, the next sort of 20 to 30 years, not, going to, not what's going to happen over the next sort of 12 months. All right. What about psychology? How does that play on an investor's mind and perhaps you've got to fight it too haven't you you go against your natural instincts yeah we are uh, as humans we're terrible investors uh, so we make a lot of decisions actually based on emotion and not logic you know we buy a house because it's got a nice aspect or we you know buy a car because it goes really fast we make a lot of decisions actually based on emotion um, and this is where investors actually come unstuck. You know, they see a stock or an ETF that's gone up, you know, 15, 20%, and they think, well, let's buy this. But then they have an investment which might have fallen, and then they sell out. So it's kind of the buy high, sell low kind of mantra. So you could have two uh, two investors who invest in the exact same investment, uh, but have two completely different outcomes. It just comes down to the psychology um, of investing. So uh, this is where I guess a lot of people, again, come unstuck with this is that they make their decision on their investing based on emotion, not on logic. So this is probably where, you know, having someone in your corner can sort of help navigate, you know, when it markets go up and markets go down, that you're not making sort of irrational decisions at irrational times. Dare I ask then, Lee, is there a role for AI in this? You talk about humans being terrible decision makers when because it, it is based on emotion. Do yep. you think there is a role for AI in investment decision making? Hundred percent, yeah, and that that's probably going to come in in probably the the index space and smart ETFs as well. Obviously, but I'm, we're starting to see that. Obviously, smart index uh, ETFs do have some rules, but I I could do see that AI is going to play a huge role in 
potentially forming uh, new indexes and, and making decisions around uh, where money should be allocated based on data and all that kind of thing. So absolutely, I do see that as going to be a positive, sp- positive play in this space in the future. But but not simplistically. I mean, all very well sort of throwing uh, a question into uh, chat GPT and uh, coming out with a, a decision making on what I should buy next. Yeah, probably not. Um, there's probably a little bit more data that, that needs to be involved in making those decisions. So just using like, the likes of chat GPT to go, well, where should I put my money? Um, and again, you know, even if it does come to spit out with an answer, like, are you going to, you know, m- hold on to that decision um, if the, the investment actually goes one way or another? So particularly if it falls, are you then going to sell out based on what you put in chat GPT? So I don't think that is probably the, where the role of AI is going to be uh, coming to. There's going to be obviously bigger data sets, which are going to help select an investment portfolio based on AI.